In my guide to the trenches today, I'm going to show you how to take on the Black Ox Beetles cheesily, as well as get yourself nearly 1700 science points, plus two milk molars and a mega milk molar, whole bunch of other resources. The trenches are now one of the best places to come to top up on everything from quartz to salt to some of the food items and clay. Not forgetting pupa and also you can get some lint here as well instead of going all the way up to the top deck. We'll also be taking on the dust mites and ladybird larvae here as well. So do leave a like, check out the rest of my guides and let's go. So this whole zone is meant to be pretty tough. So you should have the best equipment that you can get hold of. The one thing you're probably not going to have is the termite axe because you need to go through the trenches to get the termites to then go ahead and craft it. So just bear that in mind. You might not be able to actually get the lint until you've gone and got a few of the termites that appear just outside of the wood pile. Obviously bring enough resources to make a lean-to just for the outpost, but otherwise also make sure you bring a dandelion tuft, as you can take a fair bit of damage falling in the trenches sometimes. You should find plenty of snack foods if you're really low, and water might not be so much of an issue as you can get it from a sprinkler in here. And then I would say the only other thing you maybe want to bring is a crossbow or tier 2 bow and plenty of feather arrows. Or if you haven't got any feather, then yep, absolutely fresh and salty. Salty for the black ox and fresh for the dust mites. If you've got an axe, that'll take care of the dust mites, a hammer or generic for the black ox, and then obviously larvae, anything that's going to not be spicy, basically. And last tip ahead of the video, I guess don't use any generic weapon with the larvae either. So if we start this off by coming from the grill and the line of pebbles or rocks that you can walk along, this is a great place to find a scarab. There's another scarab location just near the termite hill as well, but along this path is where they normally come along. There's a whole bunch of bird that you can get in this zone as well. Now trenches, as I've been saying at the start, offer a huge amount of resources. It's a really great spot to build an outpost, particularly to go and get a whole bunch of different stuff. One thing though is to make sure that you avoid the eastern side of the trenches, particularly where you see this mint container. This is where all the dust mites are. Now you might need some actual dust mite fluff, and this is actually a bit of a quicker and easier spot to come and get some, but I would say, unless you're particularly looking for it, avoid this area. You don't really want to have to waste around with these guys, and they do take up so much of your time trying to take them out. If you actually need a dust mite though, then go ahead and do this method of jumping down on some of these roots. This will get you a bit closer so that your aim's not as bad, and it does mean that you're more or less a bit safer from them. I think they can possibly shoot up here, but for some reason, the game thinks that you are standing on a rock and the creatures are kind of avoiding you. Of course, if you just want to get in, then yeah, make sure you've got an axe weapon. It looks like chopping damage does the amount of damage to them, just like it does with normal mites. And again, it looks like fresh damage also does extra against them. I was kind of hoping wearing a mask might negate the slow effect, but it doesn't seem to. I still got affected by it. So yeah, make sure you just got your best weapons and armors when coming down here to face these guys. Anything that's going to give you a lot of extra health. One or two of these guys are never going to kill you unless you're maybe woe mode. But it's when three or four start swarming or hitting you with that slow, meaning that you're not doing as much damage. That's when trouble starts. So I would say use the arrow methods. This may get a bit patched. They may actually buff them against arrows in the future but it only takes maybe three or four of either feather arrows, splint arrows or maybe even the cool arrows, the mint arrows. The mint arrows are what I'm using right here and you can see it's doing a fair amount of damage against them. It could feel a bit cheesy but every enemy has to have some sort of weakness and I don't mind the mites being a bit weak against arrows since so, so many of the other creatures have been buffed against them now. You can find up to seven dust mites in this area sometimes, so if you definitely need a lot of the fuzz, this is a great place to come and avoid in all the black ants and the climb all the way up to the deck. Once you've cleared them out on the far side of the trench, you will find some treasure that you can dig up, and again, it's got the chances of being either a chest or possibly resources like salt or mints or cha-chas. You also get a first chance of getting some clay as well, and it's a good little spot or run to come down here and grab some too. Make sure though that you've maybe got one of the perks that you've got from Burgle to increase your stack sizes, or you won't be able to carry too much. There's also a mint inside the actual box here that you can get into. You just have to crouch and then jump up and you should be able to get to the next one. Also huge amounts of quartzite all over the place. You find these little extra side levels that go up the sides of the trench, and this is where you can find science points and more. In fact, if you head down to the middle of the trenches where we just came from the dust mites and follow this one around, you can see we've got a jack below us. Keep going to the right hand side and you will find 500 science points. 
And if you actually jump across the routes to the other side and follow this way around, then again, we're gonna get some extra resources too. We just need to keep following it over and you're gonna to have to do a little bit of parkour to get around, but keep going and you will find some of this. There's loads of pupa all over here. You might have to look actually right into the far corners of the trench, but you will find just as much pupa here as you will actually under the deck, and maybe a bit quicker and easier to get hold of too. This zone is relatively empty. I'm thinking they may add some more creatures in the future, so you should be okay to go and get the next milk molar without too much trouble. It seems like the dust mites don't really venture this far into the trenches, and so far I've not come across too many other creatures. Maybe at the top on the surface where the glove is, which I'll show you in a second, that's where you're going to come across much more ladybird larvae, but in the trenches now they seem to have changed the path in, so there's not as many. And at this point you can just jump down and start gathering all the stuff that you're looking for. Like I said, a great time to come here and do one run grabbing all sorts of different resources. I'm not going to pinpoint every single one of them, but you get the idea. If you look, you'll find pupa, you'll find clay, you'll find quartzite, you'll find mints, you'll find spicy cha-chas. I'm going to show you a good location where I think it's worth building a little outpost later. And to cap it all off, you'll come across this fork, which has got a rich amount of salt deposits underneath it as well. The trench of the right of the fork doesn't really appear to have too much in it other than maybe a gold glistening treasure somewhere. So far in some of these loot boxes I've got the Quisildar lion food as well as the spicy shards and mint shards. Just past the fork there's a narrow little corridor that again that's got loads of pupa so I'll point this one out and this will take you to a central area where there's a big pool of water. So bear in mind these landmarks and this will help you not get too lost running around the trenches. Pretty much is a little circle that you can do between the fork as well as the big pool. At the moment, with the PTB only being a few days from full release, there was nothing inside it. it. Looks like it's just a spot where you can maybe rest up from any creatures that might be attacking you. But yeah, I did find this area surprisingly empty. You will find ladybug larvae sometimes wandering around down here, but I just didn't have as many as I'd seen earlier. Look out for that pipe, that's where we're going to head soon, as I'm going to show you some more science points and another molar. If you keep hearing the science points ping, it's the one that's on the glove which is on the surface of the trenches, so we'll get to that in a while. So at the crossroads of the fork and the big pool, if you actually jump up onto this little dirt piles here and go all the way around, you should see a spicy cha-cha in the distance that you can go and grab. Just make sure to use the roots to help you get across rather than trying to do big jumps that you might not make. So you'll never run out of food in the trenches. Water is a little bit more of an issue, so again, bring a canteen. But there is a sprinkler on the surface which will show you as well. You literally can't move for the amount of food and treasure that you're going to find in the trenches. This way you come here with a minimal amount of stuff on you to grab all the loot. At the pool water, if you go down the left hand side trench, it will bring you to another circle which takes you up to where we just entered pretty much. So effectively it's another loop. So if you do again pay attention to the jack, you'll recognise that you've already been down that trench and explored it all. This was the only time I got really caught out by one of these guys wandering in from the entrance way and so yeah take him out. Salt mace is absolutely fantastic for taking these guys on but again don't use any spicy weapons as they've got much more resistance to spicy tools and stuff. And also don't forget if they do manage to hit you with their sizzling and it's doing quite a bit of damage well, you can always go ahead and eat one of the mint pieces and that will stop the sizzle damage from taking any more effect. Their bites don't last too long, but you never know if two or three of them somehow spawn, it can be a real problem. So make sure you've always got some in your hot bar to munch on. So head for the pipes. The first one you're going to see has got a hole in it and you could probably shimmy up and get inside, but I didn't find anything in there. Instead, keep following the pipe along the left hand side and you will come to another set of trenches. There is a hole into this pipe, but you need to get it from the surface, which we'll do in a second. If you go down the corridor on the right, it brings you back to that pool water. And that's pretty much most of the avenues of this place covered. There is so much pupa to be had if you're looking on the sides of the trench. It sometimes it can be stuck against them. So yeah, it's not always as obvious. Eventually you will come to a trench that's got spider webs in it. And again, it felt like there should be at least some sort of orb weaver or spider in here. So maybe it had just not spawned in correctly and I got really lucky. But obviously take care of any buried treasure that's on the way. And we're about to get our second molar, in fact a gold one this time. Obviously make sure you've got a tier 2 hammer, and obviously if you want more bug parts then this is not a bad spot either, taking care of the web sacks. But with everything else that you've been gathering, I'll be surprised if you've got room for any of this lot. Now before you actually go back the way you come, instead jump up the roots and try and get onto this dirt little path here. 
get rid of the spider webs and we're going to actually get to the top of the surface of the trenches. This is going to lead us to some science points and our first batch of lint that you don't have to go all the way up to the top of the deck to get. It should be easy enough to clamber up and you're going to be on the far side, a bit closer to the wood pile. So there's this cha-cha box on the left, that's where obviously it's been dropping some of the cha-chas down. And you can see we've got the bike wheel on the right hand side, which also has science points that we'll check out in the future. I will go over the field station in a minute, but let's finish off exploring the rest of these trenches. You can go underneath the box and you should be able to jump across onto the glove here. It's probably the easiest and quickest way to get on this sort of central island. This is another landmark and again, it's going to have science points as well as the lint. Again, tier 3 axe needed, chop away at it and it's just a quick and easy place to get at least maybe 10 pieces of lint. You'll find the other clump just on the other side of the glove, job done. On the far side of the glove is where you're going to find 100 science points. Not a huge amount, but hey, it's better than nothing. And this is where I would like to build a little outpost. I feel like it's really close to the field station. It's right in the middle of the trenches, so you can just drop down and go and get some resources if you want to. A bit dangerous because there are some larvae spawns around here, but I would still say it's a decent place to come and maybe think about having a little base. And as you just saw, drop down on the far side and you'll be able to get into the hole inside the pipe. Get yourself the milk molar and another 500 science points. If you keep going along the way that the pipe is, eventually you'll get to this trench with a leaf and more of these clovers. And that brings you back to where we were, where we took on the spiders. And then you can see the way to go towards the fork. So now we're going to go and take on the black ox. This is why you need some sort of outpost. If you're looking for parts, it's very easy to get done over by this guy. He doesn't really do as much damage as you would think. And he can be cheesed quite easily at the moment with the terrain. Especially this central dirt pillar, you can pretty much just keep running around it or use this leaf to also get yourself a little bit of extra time and it'll pretty much run away. Now I had a whole bunch of different arrows I was tying out here just to see what would do a lot of good. Obviously the super gas arrows do a fair amount of damage and make light work of him for sure. But as you just saw, one hit from one of them rocks nearly did me over. I took about 75% of my health, I would say, or 70, 65. And there, if I was wearing any kind of lesser armor, he would absolutely would have killed me in that one shot. So, cheese away, I've never had a problem until the devs actually fix it and make him a bit more versatile. He does have a charge attack, which I'll show you on the second one. There are two ox spawns at least in here. You might even get lucky and get a third. You can see regular feather arrows are doing a fair amount of damage as well and he seems to have got stuck on this little bit of a dirt pile. If that happens then you can just go ahead and close in with a melee weapon instead. Don't worry I'm going to show you a little bit in a minute that I did try to attempt take one on but again they did get stuck pretty easily. It really is useful trying to get this as early as possible because absolutely the tier 3 hammer is a beast taking on lots of creatures it just does so much damage and obviously it means a lot easier harvesting and gathering resources so if you go and kill these all in one go then you should have enough to go ahead and craft your brand new hammer so that first black ox is actually guarding a quite big large area with some buried treasure in the corners and for me, this is where the second one was also really super close to. But like I said, sometimes they'll be spawning on top of the actual dirt trenches. I did decide to soften him up a little bit with some arrows again, but this time you get to see the charge in action. They are surprisingly quick for their size. This is where the problems come into it as well. If you haven't cleared the area out properly, you might get attacked by some of the lava ladybugs, the ones that finally did spawn. So yeah, make sure you take these guys out as quickly as possible and you're not got in the way of the black ox itself. Again, if you always retreat to that dirt sort of pillar, it's a great place to cheese some of the creatures and then go back to him. This time I'd have to start over again as he regained all his health. The rocks do bounce around quite a bit, so there is a chance it can hit you when it rebounds off something. So don't think you're safe just because you missed it the first time. And yeah, look out for his actual proper full charge. He runs pretty quickly on his own, but I wasn't prepared for this and he nearly got me. I'm pretty sure that would have done the same amount of damage as a rock hitting me. Otherwise, they're fairly easy to take on. Just keep your distance from them, or if you are going to get in close, make sure you've got a decent hammer or some sort of generic weapon. This guy did end up getting stuck and caught, so I just went in and wailed on him just to show you the kind of damage you can maybe do. And obviously the hammer did a huge amount of damage once I had enough stammer. Obviously it is the tier 3 one, so as it should. 
like Salty. If you don't have the Salt Mace, then make sure you equip that as that's his weakness. And don't use any kind of stabbing weapon as he's pretty resistant to them. I'm sure the devs are going to buff him a little bit and work on him so he's not easy as cheese or get stuck. But that was the second one done. In my earlier testing as well, it looks like you can't really block the rock, or you shouldn't try blocking it when he throws it, just try and dodge it, and again with his attack, try and move out of the way rather than sitting there and taking the hit. If you haven't got tier 3 armour, chances are he is going to pretty much down you. As you saw as well from the very beginning, they can sense you from quite a distance away, I swear a lot more than some of the other creatures in the game, and they're obviously massively aggressive, but they're not aggressive to any other creatures, so you won't even be able to kite them against any, unless they do attack him first. It's quite a wide bowl, it definitely feels like it's an arena built to battle some of these guys, so look out again for more Ladybug Larvae, but you should also find plenty of more buried treasure in each corner. In fact, there's at least three spots where you can get buried treasure in this area. If you follow the first trench up to the left, past where we saw the Black Ox, you'll come pretty much to the other side of the barbecue, and this is where we're going to start looking at taking out some more larvae if we really want to, or instead we're going to go to another little island here towards where the bike is as there's another 100 points of science on top of this rock and then we'll go and actually gather the gum that's on the bike and also another 500 science points. It's probably going to be a good idea to build little highways across some of these gaps just to make life a bit easier especially if you do get ambushed by any larvae. Now before I did go ahead and climb the bike I did check every other part and inch of these trenches and I couldn't find anything else. The science points that were alerting to me were kind of broken as it was the ones on top of the bike and that did leave me a bit confused. But yeah this isn't a bad spot either, I do think this is where the ox beetles will spawn though just on the dirt above the trenches sometimes too. And as far as I could tell there was nothing on top of any of these lights, again I'm disappointed there's not as many scabs, maybe they'll add it as part of the full update, maybe they've seen them by now, if they have let me know in the comment section, but yeah I do feel like they should have added some more. Ok back to the tyre, so if you jump on a piece of grass and you've got obviously one of the dandelion tufts, you, this will make life a bit easier. You can pretty much clamber up the sides of the tyre and get onto the inner spokes. Now if you try jumping on top of some of these spokes to get up to the middle, you might find it a bit more difficult or if you're a bit better at parkour, you might find it a lot easier. But in fact if you go to the other side of the tyre, that is actually the better way to climb up. I've cut out the two or three times I fell off, so now I'm just showing you the best way. Go all the way up, nice and simple, and then just clamber up, and you should be able to get up here and get 500 sweet science points. Doesn't appear to be anything else on top of the bike, I was wondering if maybe there'd be another sort of location space for it or anything like that, but nope, just the 500 science points at the moment. And then it's back down and up the wood piece to the field station. This is a chance for also to get some of the splinters if you manage to get yourself a tier 3 axe. Chances are though you've probably been here already if you've got the tier 3 axe. And yep, you can go ahead and scan any new items you've got and get prepared to go ahead into the termite hill. As I said, I'm saving that for another video completely. I feel that's worth it covering the tarpaulin as well as the wood pile and everything else underneath. But in all this area, you can go ahead and grab loads of burrweed. And if you're patient enough, some of the termites as well as termite soldiers do come out of the wood pile if you want to get them. And that's the quick and easy way to go ahead and get the axe. And that is pretty much it, done and dusted. This other little island I did want to show you, I was thinking about this as my potential outpost spot, but it did have at least two larvae spawns here. Some chances are they'll carry on spawning even if you cover this place, so yeah, be careful of that. But otherwise could be potentially a good spot too. It's literally right next to the glove and it should just give you a bit more space to go ahead and build. Although top tip, try not to use the actual salt mace. It will do the job, but actually they're more resistant to generic damage and that's what the mint mace is. And also they actually take more damage when you use fresh. So make sure you've got some sort of stabbing weapon with fresh on it and you'll take down these guys a lot quicker. Just as I said at the start, don't use spicy. I hope that's been helpful, check out the rest of my guides, I've only got the wood pile to left to do at this point, and look out for loads more tips guides coming for Grounded in the future, and I'll see you ratbags later.